Water is vital for every Kalahari resident. It may take some a little longer to get there, but the rewards are just as welcome. But pleasure comes at a price. The tortoises have left their eggs unguarded, incubating in the warm sand, and for the whiskers, tortoise eggs make the perfect breakfast. Most in need of nourishment is pregnant flower, so she's the first to have a crack at one. These large eggs are a bit of a mouthful, and only the biggest meerkats, like the dominant couple, find them easy to open. While the whiskers dig in, the Kalahari Country Club is getting busy. With everyone scrambling to get to the bar, tempers are fraying. should learn to get a grip. And they're not the only ones. While the adults gorge themselves, young Einstein's lack of experience is all too evident. The egg-eating challenge is proving to be a large one. No amount of thinking around this problem seems to help. It's very frustrating. Einstein's not one to give up easily, but try as he might, he just can't crack it. Unfortunately, the conundrum will only be solved when he's older, with jaws the size of dad's. Back at the country club, last call is in, and most of the guests are heading home. But there's always one old-timer left propping up the bar. It's going to be a slow journey back. Made even slower if you've got to go back and collect your friends. Completely satisfied, and with telltale egg on their faces, Flower and Zaphod decide it's time to snooze off their excesses in the shade. While Flower's pregnant, all that Daisy's interested in is keeping on the boss's good side. Mozart is sticking to her tactic of staying on the edge of the group and out of Flower's way. Being the oldest subordinate female, 
she's the most likely to be evicted. And sometimes, trouble has a habit of finding her. The Casanova King of the Kalahari is back in town. He spent plenty of time at the Whiskers before, and even mated with Mozart's two sisters, Tosca and Daisy. But it's imperative that she resists his charms. If Flower smells the scent of a rival male on her, then she could be in serious trouble. As Carlos makes his approach, there's someone standing between this Kalahari Romeo and his Juliet. And that someone is none other than Sondheim, an elder of Carlos. He's the smoothest meerkat in the territory, and his roving experience is more than a match for Carlos. But while Sondheim hangs back, Carlos seems to have the upper hand and sneaks close to Mozart. If she falls for his advances, then her fate with Flower could be sealed. Mozart decides the better of it and moves away. Not to be put off, Carlos follows her into the bush. But his hopes are dashed. Mozart has run straight into the arms of Sondheim. As Carlos sneaks away, defeated in love for the first time, Mozart can only hope that her secret liaison will go undetected by her mom. As Mozart returns to the gang, it's her misfortune that the first meerkat she meets is Flower. And Mom can smell that her daughter has been up to no good. Biting Mozart's tail base is a painful warning that her days with the group could be numbered. As dark clouds gather over the Kalahari, the whiskers make their way home. This will be the first storm of the year, and while the arrival of rain spells good news for most of the Kalahari residents, could this also mark the last night that Mozart will spend with her family? Next time on Meerkat Manor, storm clouds gather on the horizon, and is Mozart's fate finally sealed? <laughs>